Thank you. So the out of the box solution to the JCPS transportation problem is expected to move forward today. The district's board plans to discuss an agreement with TARC at tonight's meeting. So Jim Stratman is joining us here in the studio to dig into the proposal. And Jim, we do expect that, you know, this will get at least the sign of approval from Dr. Marty Polio, the superintendent. He's expressed some support. Yeah, I mean, we know that initially JCPS were the ones who recommended something like this. So we expect district leaders to have some level of support for it when it comes to the meeting tonight. But whether or not it'll get a vote to Tonight, eh, that's still up for discussion. The board is going to discuss the plan that TARC approved back on June 7th that involves TARC leasing upwards of 70 drivers to JCPS for the upcoming school year. Now on paper, this sounds like it could be mutually beneficial for both parties here. Last year's bus driver shortage was a nightmare as well as the nightmare transportation issues. You know that we all still have pretty fresh in our minds. Plus, Back in April, we know that JCPS told parents of magnet and traditional school students that it was cutting many of their bus routes. A JCPS proposal shows that bringing in TARC could mean restoring some of these routes. And for TARC, it means keeping drivers employed. It's an important step forward for us beyond just contributing to the community because it means we're able to push out any potential layoffs. These are drivers that we're now able to keep working, we're able to keep folks supporting their family, and that's an important thing for, for TARC moving forward. Well, right now, the plan is to integrate TARC drivers into JCPS in July, but that is only if the board votes to accept the agreement with TARC. Discussions again are set to happen about that agreement tonight, along with an update on the state of JCPS transportation. Now, coming up here in the next half hour, we'll hear from a TARC driver on why he thinks this move will work. Eric, Grace? All right, Jim, thank you. Now this comes as TARC service reductions are scheduled to start by the end of the month. The transit company previously announced it'll roll back weekday service for 19 of its 30 fixed route bus lines and discontinue three routes altogether. TARC says the route reductions give it time to look for long term solutions. It's facing a financial crisis and will lose about 20% of its operating budget as American Rescue Plan funding awarded during the COVID-19 pandemic is ending. Union President Lillian Brents says the route reductions will impact more than just TARC riders. Every time there is some funding issues, they just keep chipping away at the service um, to the point to where it's, it's, it's barely in existence. It's public transportation. You cannot talk about jobs. You cannot talk about food. You cannot talk about health care without talking about transportation. TARC 3 paratransit will not be affected. The four most critical TARC routes, 4, 10, 23, and 28, will remain exactly the same every day of the week. To learn more about the changes and see all of the affected and unaffected routes, click on the link in this story on whas11.com. All right, so take a good look at these photos with us. Louisville Metro Police say this Chevy Tahoe was connected to the shooting outside a West Louisville nightclub, which left one person dead and seven others injured. The homicide unit released these photos saying it believes the suspect drove away in the SUV after the shooting outside Club H2O. It's uh, light brown in color, perhaps gold in color. It's dated between 2007 and 2014. Metro police also say the SUV would likely have bullet holes in the front. That damage occurred at the time of the shooting and that the vehicle was possibly disabled uh, and would not have been able to travel very far uh, from the scene. 40-year-old Joseph Bowers died in the shooting. Seven others were taken to a local hospital, and that includes one person who uh, has what Metro Police call life-threatening injuries. The LMPD says anyone with information about the Tahoe or the shooting itself should call the anonymous tip line at 574-LMPD. A Shelbyville man accused of shooting and killing his wife and mother-in-law will appear in court for the first time today. Investigators arrested 32-year-old Michael Hunt after he told them he, quote, had a job to take both females out. Deputies found a woman shot dead and another woman with life threatening injuries at a home in the Cropper area of Shelby County on Friday night. One woman later died at the hospital. Investigators say after being questioned, Hunt admitted he killed his wife, Emily Simmons, and mother-in-law, Beth Simmons. People who lived near the scene and were home during the shooting say they didn't think much of the gunshots because it can be normal for their area. I heard the shots. There was like six bangs that went off and I thought it was the kids with the fireworks. So I got up, went to the window and I, I seen one person in the yard, but I didn't, you know, I thought it was kids. Hunt is now charged with murder and attempted murder. He's expected in court at 1 p.m. 
The victim's family says they're grateful for the love and support they've received and that once funeral arrangements have been made, a public service will be held to celebrate Beth and Emily. The special judge who has made headlines in the Jamie Knoll criminal case will likely be removed from his civil lawsuits, according to the Attorney General of Indiana. Judge Larry Medlock was assigned the cases when the judge, the other Clark County judges, recused jurisdiction. But a spokesperson for Attorney General Todd Rakita says it was only temporary. Knoll's attorneys requested a new judge last month, but we have not seen that argued yet in court. Rokita's spokesperson says there should be a new judge this week. The attorney general has filed lawsuits against the former Clark County Sheriff in an effort to recover $4 million that was allegedly illegally spent. There's no indication Judge Medlock will be removed from Knoll's criminal case. If fresh produce is on your grocery list this week, the Kroger Mobile Market will be set up near the Fairdale Library today as part of Kroger's Zero Hunger, Zero Waste program. Partnering with Dare to Care, it aims to provide much needed food access in areas impacted by food deserts. Fairdale's Cash Saver grocery store we know closed in 2022. The mobile market is from noon until 1 and is available every second and fourth Tuesday of the month. You'll want to bring your credit, debit, or EBT cards. Cash is not accepted at the market.